Hi guys, my name's Jack Nagel and I've been in recovery for over 10 years now and completely transformed my life out of addictive patterns. And with Real Drug Talk and our treatment company called Connection Based Living, I've helped hundreds of other people completely change their life as well. Like Haley, who's over six years in recovery, you can check her story out on our YouTube channel. And James, who's over two years in recovery now, you can also check his story out on our YouTube channel. Um, because of the mad times that we live in, uh, we have put together a book. It's called The 11 Definitive Steps to Transform Your Life Out of Addictive Patterns Without Having to Go to Rehab. You can find it by scrolling down in the description that I'm pointing at here. If you just scroll down and click that link, it'll take you to the special offer on the book. It's super cheap. Um, and also you get some free bonuses along with it as well. So if you're looking to transform out of addictive patterns and get some change and you know have things to be different and joyful and have some freedom in your life i'd highly recommend taking a look at this book it could be the most important thing you read um, in 2021 and 2022 moving forward um, into the video guys peace um and i think yeah it's such an interesting insight and window that you kind of open up for people just to see the inner workings and like the effort that goes into kind of concealing and there's so many people out there that live that way um that you just don't know about uh yeah. and it's and it's crazy so so what happened just just to kind of cover off on it at the pointy end like how did you have your for a lack of a better word rock bottom moment or the moment that you went nah i'm fucked i need to go to rehab or like how did that all um yeah well, it wasn't about? wasn't wasn't my choice mate so I, I left Carlton at the end of 2008, I think it was, and didn't work for about eight or nine months. And my brother-in-law was in the pub, so he asked if we wanted to invest in a pub. Uh, yep. It was a gaming venue, and gambling was a key part of my addiction as well. Yeah, uh, I, I jumped at it. My wife wasn't keen at all um, because I was taking our funding uh, that we were going to buy a house with to um, yep. get this business. So I went and ran the pub for two and a half years probably, and that's when it went downhill really quickly. So it's yep. a... a you know, a, a venue where I was, um, I didn't have any boundaries with it either. Uh, there was a lot of things that I, uh, a lot of behaviours that I went to to fund my uh, my habit. Uh, and yep. I was probably using, to be explicit, probably a gram a day at that stage. So it's a, a fair amount of money and amphetamines I was putting in my system. And and again, it was a, it was over those three years. It was just that um, that that sadness and. And the and just the miserable state of mind with the yep. low self worth and self esteem and like lack of purpose and a few of those really hardcore things that are really hard to admit. Um, but it wasn't me, mate. It was you know I was I still thought I was going okay. Um, yeah. But Nicole had mentioned or not had mentioned. She said at uh, beginning of 2011 that you know she thought we were going two different paths in our lives and we were. I was coaching a team, uh, Heidelberg, through 2010. So I was barely home. I was working a few nights a week at the pub, uh, three young kids, and I just wasn't present at home. So when I yep. was home, I was just a, a, a body. Um, yep. I couldn't connect with any of them. It was just a, a really sad time uh, for us as a family, but also you know, me individually. And uh, yep. Nicole got to the stage where she just had enough and said, you need to leave. Yep. Um, so I left and I moved in with Mathila. Uh, again, probably not <laughs> as the greatest. You do, as you do. Yeah, well, he, he's the only bloke that, or only person that would have had me at that stage, basically. Yeah. And again, this is this is Nicole's thinking different paths, alcoholism and gambling. That's what she knew I did. So yeah. she was thinking, she spoke to a few specialists over that month I was with my dealer. Uh, and she's the one that um, basically got it set up, sorted out with Melbourne Private. So it was a, a semi intervention. I didn't know what was going on. She said we were going to go and see the kids at school for something. Oh, but she only thought it was about alcohol and gambling. Yeah, yeah. Oh. She didn't know the drug use was a part of it. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, she listened to what, who who she listened to because she said, you know, get him in here, um, and she drove me to Melbourne and basically dropped me off. And my thing was, a lot of people say, "What did you stay for?" And I said, "Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I stayed. Uh, I knew I uh, certainly didn't want to live the way I was living, but I had no ability to live differently." So yep. I just had, you know, a two, one or two percent of willingness to to sit there and think, let's let's have a look at what's here, yep. um, and that's my recollection. It may may not be completely true, but that's how I remember it. Yeah. Um, and then the and the recovery started from there, and and I was one of those ones, thank God, uh, that I didn't um, 
I wasn't obsessed to use. Like mm-hmm. like we have people coming through sober living that uh, can be obsessed to, to be using, you know, three, four months being abstinent, which is yeah. just, I'd hate to think how painful that is when, you, when you're sitting in rehab and all you want to do is get out and use. Yeah. For me, it was different and I was okay to be able to sit there and engage and, and let the recovery process start. But even then, I, you know, I, I laugh when I see Jack more off from Malv and I, uh, I didn't tell him the truth for probably two weeks. So I, yeah. I go in there with a the thinking, Gavin Krasiska, AFL player, Collingwood, I, I, I can't admit to the drug use and the amphetamine use. So I'm happy for them to think it's alcohol. I'm happy for them to think it's gambling. That's okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to con the, the therapists at, at Melbourne as well. And and by about the two-week mark, I went into Jack and said, Jack, my, my main addiction is not really alcohol and gambling. It's probably cannabis and amphetamines. And he said, yeah, look, we knew something was going on. We knew that we knew we hadn't got the whole story. So um, <laughs> I wasn't even honest with them to start with. But then Nicole found out probably a week and a half later. So she yeah. found out the extent a week and a half later. Which, and uh, and what was her reaction? Did she kind of fall off uh, her chair sort of thing? Yeah, or? no, she was um, – yeah, look, her even dropping me in there it was nervous breakdown type situation because yep. she just didn't know what the hell – and you know how, how confusing addiction is. Like I've been working with sober living for – eight years and it's still confusing for me even to talk about it's it's yep. different for everyone it's difficult for families and the addict themselves and trying to manage that all is really hard um yep. but she was she was shattered uh, completely completely broken and i'm really fortunate and lucky that she uh, even gave us the chance to rekindle and start something differently once i started getting well just a quick interruption to let you guys know that we've created a complete new book called the 11 definitive steps to get recovery without going to rehab. And for a short time only, we've got a super special deal on it uh, where you can get the book for a heavily discounted price, plus some free bonuses, the book audio recorded and a free self-care planner that I've used to help me start my day and finish my day in a really uh, nice and freeing fashion. So if that's of interest to you and you're looking for some answers on how to get some transformation out of addiction without having to lock yourself away in rehab for ages, maybe you might want to check out the book search for it in the description below back to the video peace amazing it's such an interesting story and uh i think um the the thing that i've like sort of come to learn about myself and about other people as well like when you said you know like why did you stay like and that that's probably something that i always think is important for people to know as well is that it's kind of one of the um annoying things about addiction like yeah like they say it comes out in these like destructive behaviors and this fucking bad attitude like you know like when people check into rehab like sometimes you just want to like slap them you know what i mean because you're like mate get your fucking stop giving me curry like i'm trying to help you buddy like stuff like that but it's funny because it comes out like that people think like oh he's just a wanker he doesn't really want help or whatever it is but like deep down when you're at the stage that you're at it usually most people don't want to be doing what they um are doing anymore but they just don't know how to articulate it ask for the help and they're desperate i I, I don't think i've ever met anyone that says they they come in saying hey gab how you going and give me a high five and say what a great day to go to rehab (laughs) no one does that so most of us are stooped in so much denial as well like no matter how bad the consequences are it's never as bad. And, you know, the, the drill, unless you've been in the hospital or you've, you've passed away, that's that's our rock bottom. We can just keep having those rock bottoms. Like we don't believe in a rock bottom. We just believe in many, many rock bottoms until you're dead, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and no one, no one wants to go into rehab. It's just a fact of the matter. But we hope from our perspective, and it's what I've learned also, that if you can stay long enough um, in a service like ours or support like ours or whatever it may be, when the when the shift happens, like when you have that psyche shift or spiritual shift, whatever you want to, however you want to call it, spiritual awakening, it could be anything. Um, once, if you can stay long enough to to experience that and and just a little hope, you know, we talk about the self esteem jar, sticking marbles in it, do uh, esteemable acts. It's it's like this hope. Like as soon as you get a little bit of hope, like that can flourish into more hope. And and I think that's what we need when we're uh, first coming in because we don't. I don't know anyone that's that comes in being really hopeful about it being successful. Like it's yeah. just a, it's a miserable disease, um, miserable behaviours that come from from our drug use and alcohol use. It's just horrible. Like you're a yeah. horrible person, Jack, when you're using. Like simple. So was I. 
yep. like it, in, in all our different ways. And that's just what it, it does to us. And and you talk about the stigma that's attached to addiction. It does my head in too, mate. I, like I obviously see your, your podcasts and read your stuff. And like the stigma we, in Australia, more so than the US, I guess, is what I know of. Like it's just, it's still so shaming. Like we do uh, drug and alcohol interventions where we support a family member trying to get a loved one who's in complete denial into treatment. Um, and the stigma attached to these families and 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 what they think of the addiction is just horribly wrong. Like eighty yeah. percent of people that go to treatment for the first time in the states go through an intervention. Yeah. Like we're they, we're still really shaming and judgmental and like it's just shitty. It makes it really hard for people to go. Oh, I'm fucked. Like, yeah. And let's go and get some help. Like we don't have many of many of those here in Australia yet. Um, yeah. But hopefully, with the more we talk about it and the more I guess profiles that come out and say, "Hey, I struggled, and this is what I've done to get well," and blah blah blah. You know, we'll com- continue to move in the right direction, which I think we are. It's just really slow. A hundred percent, and that's why, like, I'm super thankful for people like yourself, and there's others as well that you know do have that profile. Because I kind of equate it a lot to like the mental health, you know, movement yeah. that's happened. Um, we're just sort of, I feel like we're in those early phases where it's slowly kind of shifting, and it's just mm. going to take like a bit of a a uh, landslide of people with profiles to, yeah. to stand up and say, yeah, Hey, and then it'll start to shift, you know, like the one um, that it's still like, I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm still a fanboy. Like the other day I went to like that event in the city, um, the rethink addiction thing. And, and I wasn't going to go. And then they must, they, they got him on. I, I didn't even know, but like Dame Beams was um, a speaker on the thing. And I knew that he came out and talked about his like mental health and stuff, but I yeah. didn't know there was anything there with like addiction. I'm not speaking out of school because he was advertised on it on the stage telling his story and all that. So um, the more people like, and I was just like, what a fucking awesome guy for doing that. Cause I know how hard it would be if you have a profile and you're trying to get things to do, because now what I see with people with profiles that I talk to privately and stuff, they come out and say that they have a mental health issue when really <laughs> they just got a big drug problem or an yeah, alcohol problem. It's so frustrating, right. mate. It's so, <laughs> like, and I think we've, you're right. We've come so far over the last decade, I reckon in terms of that mental health wording, like yeah. with depression and, uh, and anxiety and that sort of stuff. And, and men are now, finding it a little bit more okay to go, hey, I'm struggling this way. I'm, you know, that macho ego that I grew yeah. up with from my dad and his grandfather where nothing's wrong, shut up, you idiot, I can get on with it, whatever. Yeah. But that's disappearing. So men can be feel safer to be more vulnerable. Um, but I completely agree, mate. Call it for what it is. Well, I get it. The mental health, depression, anxiety, I get it. There's generally something underlying you and I. So yeah. we generally will have some sort of mental health component. But you use drugs and, and alcohol, it just exacerbates it and makes it a hundred times worse. Yep. So I completely agree. Let, let's, yeah, I've got a mental health concern, but you know what? I medicated that with fucking heroin, meth, uh, amphetamines, can it, whatever, and I become a drug addict. Yeah. I've become so reliant on the drugs, I was addicted. So let's use the word addiction or whatever the, the good word to use is and call it for what it is. I wholeheartedly agree because you, you hear about it even the, you know, maybe stepping out of school here with the AFL. Like it's mental health reasons. Well, no, it's not. He's a drug addict. <laughs> he's using cocaine or he's yeah. a drug user. But yeah. it's still because of that shame. It's like it's 100%. that judgment and that shame. It's really wrong. And that's 100%. what's going to keep this industry in the in the dark ages. Like yeah. it, it, until we can sort of open it up where people just go, yep, yeah, I'm addicted. Yeah. Give me some help. Um, you know, it's going to be the same. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for supporting the Real Drug Talk YouTube channel. Every video you watch, comment, subscribe to helps us to push through the YouTube algorithms and hopefully reach more people and help them out. Now, listen, we're living in the most crazy times for the past hundred years. And because of that, as I mentioned throughout this video, we've created a brand new um, ebook that we have a special deal on called the 11 Definitive Steps 
to transforming out of addictive patterns without having to go to rehab. So if that sounds of interest to you, check out the links below. You can click on it and claim the super special deal that we have on it at the moment. Again, hope you and your family are doing okay and would love for you to check out the rest of the videos on our channels and share them with anyone else that you think it might help. See you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.